Hi, I'm Miro. I'm a TNT champion. This is Rachel Ellerine, the queen of Strong Smile. I'm Eric Bischoff. Live events, all right? When the WWE comes on the holiday tour, when they come to Ireland. Or David Boy without hair braids. As a fan with braids, as a dog <laughs> without braids. And you. And you are watching. Are watching WrestleSlam. WrestleSlam. And you're watching WrestleSlam. Okay, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of WrestleSlam via Sports Matters TV. I'm joined by uh, the legend himself, Mark Haskins, and I've got uh, my co-presenter Tim Cronin with me as well. Uh, first of all, Mark, it's been um, it's been a, a very unusual 13, 14 months, especially for wrestlers. Um, obviously, a lot of shows cancelled. You know, we can't really leave. You know, the UK, Ireland. But um, how have you been? I've been doing great, mate. Like, it actually turns out I'm really unsociable at the best of times. So, you know, this past year being told to self-isolate and not see anybody has been uh, has actually been a bit of a dream, you know? So um, it's, um, it's, it's been quite fun as well. Like, uh, I'm a huge fan of just training in general. So this time off has allowed me to train in just very bizarre ways that otherwise I wouldn't be able to, to maintain if I had a, a full wrestling schedule. So I've been keeping busy at least. That's good. And like we know how busy your wrestling schedule can be. So maybe maybe the break is a blessing for the body because there's a lot of bumps, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of hair work put in. But like obviously you're you're fairly active. I know you train quite a bit, but obviously the break might do you somewhat good. Oh, absolutely. Like I started training to be a wrestler 17 years ago. Um, and I got into shows when I was 18, so I guess that's 14 years on on actual shows itself. And yeah, I've been active most, you know, most of that time. There's only been two real sort of stints where I've had maybe three to four months off um, up until this point. So this break has definitely been been needed. And I think it's actually probably added like a, a few years to my career as well, just being able to chill and just enjoy myself and just, you know, relax a little bit and not have suffer that kind of, uh, yeah, that intense kind of schedule that you end up having where you get thrown on your head for a living. So it's uh, it's been nice. It's been nice. Definitely. No, Mark, we have to speak about the early days. How, how did the wrestling come about for you first day? Obviously, look, we're all fans growing up and we, we watch it on TV and stuff. Was it kind of like a similar path where you just had um, you know, a night for it first day and then said, I'm going to do it? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, one of my childhood friends uh, was a kid who suffered from cerebral palsy. And um, he and I, he kind of introduced me to wrestling. He brought around a VHS one day. Um, it was uh, Bad Blood 97. First match I watched was Shawn Michaels Undertaker, Hal in a Sal. And that was, that was what hooked me in, you know. So, um, yeah, and I guess just we had our friend, our friendship just kind of blossomed more so over that. It was something that we connected over. Um, you know, we were just around each other's houses all the time. If we ever went out to buy wrestling figures and found new ones in the shop, we'd run home and call the other one and be like, mate, like Toys R Us, I have a new range of toys in. Do you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I guess just from there, uh, I, you know, one thing leads to another. I started to go into shows in the UK back when the old FWA was around. Um, I was a fan just, you know, um, one day I approached the tape trader at the back of the stall and said, um, you know, do you have any information of where I could train? And he pointed me in the direction of the FWA Academy, which at that time was probably the best training center in not just in the UK, but all in Europe, right? Like they were turning out all the guys who've gone on to, to make real names for themselves, you know, since then. So um, for me, it was a no brainer, you know, I wanted to go and be the best I could at this. So I decided to go to the best place and just try and, you know, have the best crack and set myself up for the best future that I could going forward. And just one thing led to another, um, yeah, my parents are still waiting for me to grow out of wrestling now. So <laughs> we we all get that. And like it's it's been a phenomenal career. Like you're you're Miss Emma Tim would just say that you're younger than us, like you're your early thirties, um, you know, absolute prime of your life and the best years are to come. But you know, constantly on the road, Mark, you're you're you know, it's 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 you know, we see you everywhere, you know, top shows all over the world. Obviously you enjoy the traveling and the different cultures all around the world. Well that's the thing, mate, is like you you get to fly to all these amazing places, but all you see is like the inside of a venue, the inside of a hotel, and maybe the inside of some kind of restaurant. And between that, it's just airports and what have you. Um, it's only really been in the last few years that I've tried to make a bit more of a conscious effort to, you know, um, on the times I've been to places like, say, Canada, for example, is to stick about for an extra day just so I could go and, you know, have a look around Toronto. I have family out there, so I wanted to try and meet up with them. Um, you know, I've been to theme parks and stuff in, in um, 
in Toronto as well. You know, just try and get out and explore these areas because a lot of the time you don't see it. You know, like um, I've been signed to Ring of Honor for what two, three years now, and um, I've technically been to places like Nashville, but all I've seen is the inside of a Denny's at like two a.m. and you know another hotel. So you know, it, you get to it is an amazing life that you get to travel so much, but you don't get to see as much as everyone thinks you do because you're obviously not there for you know um, a holiday or anything. You're there because you've got a show to perform. And a lot of the time as well, you end up just unintentionally booking yourself into these ridiculous schedules that you shouldn't be trying to do. Like, you know, I remember a few years ago, it would be a case of you'd have a show on a Friday night in somewhere like, I don't know, like uh, Leicester, say, for example, right? And then the next night you're in Italy and then the next night you're in Wales and you're just flying here, there and everywhere and just racking up a lot of air miles along the way. But, you know, just having very little time to rest and very little time to really enjoy the areas. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it keeps you busy, but it's it's nice to have that little bit of extra time to stick about and actually enjoy some of the places you go. Agreed. Now, I've got a lot of questions for you, but I'm going to pass you over to my co-presenter, Tim. He's going to get a few questions in before I take them all from him. So, Tim, fire away, <laughs> my man. Hi, Mark. As we know, you've travelled the world and you've wrestled for a lot of indie promotions. Like I see you wrestled, you were the Smash champion, wasn't it, in the States? Beat Johnny Gargano for that title. And you've wrestled in Japan. You've wrestled in Rev Pro, Progress, everywhere. Where is your favourite promotion that you've wrestled for so far? And is there any promotion you want to go to to wrestle for? I have a I have a soft spot in my heart for OTT. I I do love um, you yeah. know flying over to Ireland and uh, <laughs> performing for those guys. Um, just I remember the, there seemed to be this buzz um, sort of emerging of OTT in a very similar way that uh, Progress created a buzz like a few years ago where you just heard good things about it. And like, you know, the, the more that you heard, the more exciting it sounded. And I remember just from my first show, I think the first show I did was part of the, when I say it was the Dublin Fringe Festival and we were in this kind of, I don't know what it was. It was some kind of tent, right? And uh, but it was it was like a it, you felt like you just walked into like a 1920s kind of like circus carnival, right? And it just had this amazing feeling to it. And then getting to do places like the Tivoli, just like it had this mad atmosphere to it, which just everybody who's there is just there because they want to have a good time, they want to get drunk, and they want to see two guys get stuck in in the middle of a ring. So you know, it's a uh, it's a it's a good concoction um, if that's what you're into, you know. So. Um, yeah, I'd say OTT is definitely one where I, I, yeah, I have a real soft spot in my heart. And it's just, and it's not just because both of you are Irish and you shout at me if I say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> and another one for you, we saw you, as I said, you fought Johnny Gargano, you fought Pat, you fought basically the best in the world. Is there any opponent you talk about the best out in you? And is there any opponent that you want to fight in the future for a dream match say, What would your dream match be? So my dream match would is basically never going to happen. Um, I met Eddie Guerrero years ago when I was a fan and I went to shows and he was the one guy where I was like, if I could ever um, go full circle and somehow end up wrestling him on a show, I'd feel like I'd really achieved something having gone from, you know, some shy, awkward kid walking up to him, asking for a picture and his autograph and then actually getting to be, you know, on the other side of the ring. Um, but unfortunately it would never happen. So, uh, yeah, apart from that, not really like I've, I've been very lucky, lucky that I've managed to wrestle a lot of good talents across the years. And I just, you know, really that's all you can ask for is just somebody who's, you know, who's good, who's somebody who's passionate that you want to step into the ring against. And that person can come in all different packages or different shapes and sizes. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, given a kind of, uh, Broad answer is just anybody who's really passionate and really wants to just step in there and, and really go for it. Great, great, great. And as we know, I know you're signed to Ring of Honor at the moment, but you're back home in the UK at the moment, are you? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Is there any plans in yet traveling back to the States to Ring of Honor anytime soon, or is it just wait and see with all these quarantine rules? Just uh, wait and see, really. Like, we've heard some rumblings, but, you know, there's... It, there's going to be, I mean, this whole situation is, is so bizarre and it, you know, it keeps seemingly changing every, you know, every time that you think you're going in one route is, you know, you'll find out that there's going to be another lockdown or something. So hopefully we don't go into that. Hopefully with the light is at the end of the tunnel here and that, you know, things will be able to, to, you know, return to some sense of normalcy. 
um, and you know, and we'll be able to start putting on shows again and being able to travel back to all the companies I love working for because it's been nice having this time off, but I've also missed uh, missed uh, you know the wrestling camaraderie and you know being able to go out and perform for everyone who you know pays to to come and see us. Epic. So, Mark, we have to speak obviously Ring of Honor, one of the biggest you know organizations in all of world wrestling. What was it like signing for Ring of Honor? Because I know you've done stuff with Impact, and you know there's been a lot of stuff over the years. But obviously, Ring of Honor is huge. And tell us about Madison Square Garden. History was made. We were actually over there. Incredible stuff. Incredible scenes. What was it like? Dude, it was awesome. And the my journey to the garden was. Um, very surreal in a lot of ways because I remember the, the show got announced and I wasn't even signed to the company at this point. And I told my wife, uh, Vicky, I was like, I'm going to be on that show. And she was like, how? You're not even signed to the company. I was like, watch me. I'm going to find my way. Right. So like somehow they ended up coming over to the UK and I think it was the summer of that year. Um, and yeah, I, I just went into this tour of being, you know, they'd used me a few times and um, I was like, this is the one. I'm coming out of this with a contract. Like, I'm not giving them a second, like, option, right? Like, they are going to sign me. And by day two of the tour, they were like, yeah, do you want to guess? Do you want to sign and come out with us? And I was like, yes, please. Do you know what I mean? And then um, I think if, it took a few months to figure things out. Um, and then uh, January 2019 is when my contract started. Uh, yeah, Supercard was coming up in, in March and I was just, yeah, just had my head down, just trying to impress absolutely everybody and anybody that I needed to, to end up on that show. And sure enough, I ended up getting to walk out of Madison Square Garden and it was, uh, it was a great experience. It was awesome. And it's one of these weird ones where, it, you know, I've had some, I've been really lucky that I've had a lot of big shows, right? Like I've got to do, you know, when I was in Japan over 10 years ago, I got to wrestle in front of, I think it was about 10,000 people in Rai Goku, right? Um, you know, I got to wrestle in Wembley Arena three times throughout my career I'm walking out of Madison Square Garden I always have the same moment where I'll step through the curtain and look around and think oh there's a lot of people here <laughs> all right time to wrestle and then just kind of carry on and go and you know do what it is that you're best at and uh it, it was great it was awesome especially being a fan in the early 2000s getting to wrestle Bully Ray in Madison Square Garden you know I was a huge fan of the, the Hardys Dudley's tag table match that they had and uh, it was cool, you know, kind of one of those moments again where things come back around and you, you're wrestling one of the Dudley boys in, in MSG. And then just afterwards, I remember blowing kisses to my wife and being like, I love you. Thank you for your support. And she was afterwards told me, yeah, I was in a completely different part of the arena. Or I don't know who you were pointing at. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. Well, I hope I made a, a, some lucky fans night. Yeah. And like we have to speak, I want to speak about the Bully Ray promos. Like that was an incredible match in general. Like it was proper hardcore style, but the promos go down was probably, like, you know, easily some of the best promos of all time. It must have been a great experience being part of that. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, and uh, getting to work with somebody like Bully as well, he's last one of the dying breeds, do you know what I mean? Like, guys from that era, like, a lot of them aren't around now, so um, for me, it was a dream come true, you know, you grow up watching these guys, you know, go and get as much knowledge from them as you can, you know, go and get into the ring with them because you're going to learn something. If somebody has been as successful as he has, because he's worked for every major wrestling company that there's been in the last 20 years and been successful in each one, why wouldn't you want to go and, you know, learn from somebody like that? And um, yeah, it, it was great. And uh, I ended up with this scar on my finger as well. I don't know if you can quite see it, but yeah, um, yeah I ended up going through a, a I think I got power bombed off the top rope through a barbed wire table. And um, as I crawled out, this part of the barbed wire cut my finger open. And this ended up getting a fine of 10 grand. Um, but I can, you know, it was Ring of Honor that picked up the tab for it. I felt terrible, but, you know, props to Joe Coff is, uh, you know, the, the Maryland Athletic State Commission, they, were, you know, came down with fines. It's illegal to, to bleed in that state and ended up getting cut through a barbed wire. You know, he, Joe Coff, he was like, you know, I don't want you to, you know, suffer for any of this. I'm picking up the tab. Um, and yeah, it was, a, it was a bizarre experience. But now I've got a, a cool little story behind this little cut here. <laughs> Epic. Mark, two more questions we have to ask. Obviously, look, over the top wrestling, it, it's, you know, Ireland's biggest promotion. It's, it's huge, global. Um, obviously, when teams get back together, we know, we know Joe's always working hard to make sure it's happen. The guy's an incredible, you know, promoter um, slash owner. But do you think we could perhaps see you back, um, you know, and, and perhaps going for that OTT championship? Maybe even a, a match against Jordan Devlin or someone, because I know... Look, Jordan Jordan's a former champion, you know, you're a champion in OTT previous. It's, it's, 
you know what I mean? You know, the, the, the OTT Championship is prestigious. And, um, you know, it is vacant to reckon perhaps down the road we might see something happen. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, who knows what the future holds, but I haven't forgotten about OTT. And, uh, yeah, don't worry. I've, I've been keeping a close eye on uh, developments, shall we say. So, yeah, but I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited about the future, and I'm, I'm very optimistic as well for once, which is nice to be optimistic and not pessimistic as hell. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I'm very, much, I'm very much looking forward to the way things, are, way things could go. Epic. And last of all, look, there's so many great guys on the indie scene right now. So many up and comers that no doubt you know about that we haven't even seen on the indie scene yet. Any guys that we should watch out for, Mark, that's up and coming? Any any big stars of the future that you could perhaps pre predict? Oh, I don't know. Um, it's a good question. I one guy who uh, you probably should keep start looking at as a uh, as a guy called Tate Mayfair, right? He's uh he's not dis- you know broadly known at the moment, but I think within the next couple of years you're going to see a lot of big things from him. Epic, epic. Mark, it's an honor as always, my man. We appreciate your time. We're lucky that you're in the UK because we normally, you know, when we bring people on, it's always Eastern time. So we could be on, on a, you know, an interview at 11 o'clock at night where it's only 3 p.m. there. But you're a stare. We're looking forward to seeing you back at Ring of Honor, um, OTT, hopefully in the future. And we will catch you very soon, my man. Thank you.